to be with you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's great to see everybody this morning. Hello to those of you worshiping with us virtually from the comfort of your homes. I'm Reverend Suzanne Pretty. Josh and Amanda are taking a few days of vacation this week, so we wish them uh, peace and rest and wellness as they take a few days away. I have a couple of announcements for you. First of all, today's Epiphany, and we're going to talk a little more uh, during the sermon time about what that means. But if you walked into the sanctuary or tuned in today and said, oh my goodness, it's still decorated for Christmas. It's decorated for Epiphany because Epiphany is represented by light. And so we wanted to keep all these beautiful lights that we have enjoyed through Advent and Christmas in the sanctuary today in celebration of Epiphany. Um, I do have one bit of sad news, which some of you may already know, but our brother in Christ, Jim Lancaster, passed away on New Year's Day. And so we invite you to please keep Faye and their children in your prayers in the coming days and weeks during this very difficult time. There are not plans for a service in the near future, but in the perhaps post-COVID future, there will be a memorial. But please keep the family in your prayers. And with that, let us worship. Well, good morning. If you don't know me, my name's Kyle, and I'm the contemporary worship leader here. Hello to all those worshiping virtually. We've got a pretty small group today, so I think we're going to have a, a, a seated, relaxed worship experience today. We're going to start with a, a great epiphany hymn, We Three Kings. So let us worship together. We three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts we traverse afar Field and fountain, moor and mountain Following yonder star Oh, star of wonder, star of night Star with royal beauty bright Westward leading still Proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never over us all. song a few months ago. Um, one of my favorite bands, Switchfoot, uh, has been doing monthly virtual concerts uh, pretty much uh, throughout the pandemic, and uh, they did a Christmas show a couple weeks ago, um, and they played the song that we're about to play. It's called The Blues, um, and he introduced it in a way that I never quite thought of before uh, as a New Year's song that he wrote on New Year's Day, um, just on a, at the end of a of a tough year for him personally, and, and uh, the song's full of, of questions, um, and it's very honest, uh, but it's, it's filled with uh, a couple of hopeful ideas sprinkled throughout as well, 
um, which is the style of, of most of their songs. Uh, so we've got a, a beautiful, hopeful New Year's song for later in the service, but this, this one's a little bit on the other end, and it just was kind of on my heart to do this one today. So hopefully this is meaningful to you. This is called The Blue. Till the world 
pray. Lord God, we thank you that uh, you are an approachable and beautiful God, that we can be open and honest with you, Lord, that we can be our true selves uh, in your presence, and that you invite us to come before you and to be a part of your kingdom. We love you, Lord, and uh, we thank you for, for the coming of this new year and for the opportunities it brings, Lord. And I pray that it would be filled with opportunities for us to be, to be kind uh, and to be your hands and feet. And that we, that we would be actively searching for ways to, to bring each other joy and to bring your people joy. We love you, Lord, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow, what a powerful song. We could just go on home now. <laughs> so I'm thinking about those words. Uh, I think my mask is going to have to hang. I'm thinking about those words, when the world caves in, and how we can interpret that. Sometimes our world has to cave in before we see the light of Christ and begin to follow it. Sometimes the world needs to cave in so that we will give in to following the Lord. What powerful music. Thank you for bringing that to us today. Amen. Epiphany. Epiphany, the season of light. Hear these words from Scripture, from Matthew, second chapter, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child that has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard of this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go! And search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising. Until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Let us pray. God of light, illumine for us your word today. Open our eyes that we might see where your light shines for us, that we may follow you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
Who ran outside on December 21st to witness the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn? Yeah, many of us did that. How many of us at least have looked at pictures of it? Okay, so the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn produced a brilliance in our night sky right here. To the naked eye, at least for Mike and me in the front yard of the Parsonage, it looked like a really, really bright star. If you, um, if you didn't see Josh's video in the weekly email this past Thursday, please go back and watch it because he spent just three or four minutes talking about this and the history of when it has appeared in the past uh, and when it would appear again. It's very interesting. I won't go into those details, but encourage you to watch that. I have a photograph that a friend of a friend took, which captures the beauty of it so wonderfully. Jupiter and its three moons, you can see it on the screen, and Saturn, and the rings are visible. But to the naked eye, it looked like a brilliant star in the dark of night, a bright light in the night sky. That's what God used to lead the Magi who would tell the world that the baby born in Bethlehem was much more than just a baby, that he was the revelation of the divinity of God, that God revealed God's self in the person of Jesus, the baby. This Messiah was the one the Jews had been waiting on for so long and one, the one, the anointed one that they hoped for. And interestingly, God used persons who were not Jews to share this news. So the Magi were representing the Gentiles they weren't Jews. They were astrologers from the east. And they were people who studied the sky for signs. They evidently knew something about the Jewish beliefs because they went to Jerusalem, the home base of the children of God. They went there to say, where is the child? We have seen his star and have come to pay homage to him. Don't you find it curious that non-Jews from far off brought the attention of the star to King Herod? And he didn't know? I mean, he was a Jew after all. But King Herod was what we would call a nominal Jew. Scholars tell us that his father, another King Herod, was an Edomite who converted to Judaism. Herod, this King Herod was too busy studying the Roman Empire and being political so that he could maintain his position of power. So he had to call together the chief priests and the scribes, whose job sort of it was to study the scriptures, because he didn't know where the Messiah would be born. They could interpret the sign because they studied and interpreted the scriptures. I want to tell you just a little bit about Epiphany today. We celebrate the Magi's visit to the Christ child, and that's what we call it, the Epiphany. And when we think about Epiphany, we think of light. Here's a little fun video from Chuck Knows Church to give us a little script description of what epiphany means to us as Christians. The word epiphany comes from the Greek word which means manifestation or to show forth. And in the church, epiphany is the Christian celebration to recognize the manifestation of the divine nature of Jesus to the Gentiles, represented by the three wise men visiting the Christ child. Now it's celebrated on January 6th, the final day of the Christmas season or the 12th day after Christmas. Get it? 12 days of Christmas, right? On the first day of Christmas. 
Something, something, something. Five golden rings. Yeah. Great, you guys sound great. By the way, it's the only part of the song I actually know, which is good too, because the actual song is like 12 minutes long. It's like a minute per day of Christmas. <laughs> what was I talking about? Aha! Epiphany. <clears throat> you see, uh, the ancient Jews believed the coming of the Messiah would only be for them and not for the Gentiles, meaning everyone else. But the wise men helped to change all that by representing the Gentiles as they were the first to worship Jesus when they brought their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the Christ child. Now Jesus healed and preached to everyone, not just a select group of people. And of course, the apostles continued that message, the good news preached by Jesus by taking it to all nations, all nations. In essence, they signaled that God's love is for everyone. Right? That's the good news that we celebrate on Epiphany. That Christ love. Have you ever had an epiphany? Have you ever said to somebody else, I just had a bright light go off in my head? Right? And you think, if you see a PowerPoint presentation, we use a light bulb to symbolize a new idea. So we think of light when we think of epiphany or something new being revealed to us or manifested for us to see. How many of you think you've ever had an epiphany? It could have been something life-changing or it could have been the Lord telling you to go visit a relative. Yeah? I mean, some of them are really, really big and some of them are not so big. But they're all important. I remember... One particular epiphany I had sitting in church when I had been praying, God, what is it that you want me to do for you? God was trying to speak to me and I was half listening and I began to say, God, what is it you would have me to do for you? And sometimes I think the moral is the story, don't ask or you'll get the answer. But really... The moral of the story is God reveals what God wants from us when we ask. And then here's the important question. If you have an epiphany, are you curious enough or even brave enough to ask curious questions, to follow the star, so to speak? Are you curious enough to dig deeper, to follow that star, to follow the light God is shining down to illuminate whatever it is God is trying to show you, to explore what God is shining the light on? Now, my husband recently reminded me that curiosity killed the cat. But I think curiosity is what motivates us to follow the star. When we really can't figure out what God is trying to lead us to. Are we curious enough to follow the light? I am reminded that Jesus spoke in parables very often. And he left those to whom he was speaking, including us today, wondering... Now, wait a minute. I've got to dig a little deeper to get the meaning here. And what might that have said to first century people? And what does that say to me today in 2021? We have to follow the star. Look for where God is shining the light. We have to be steeped in scripture like those chief priests and scribes were. Because God will illuminate God's path for us in moments of our deep faithfulness, in times when we are exploring the scriptures. If God shows up to you or sends you a sign or a nudge or a feeling or a curious comment or question from a fellow Christian, are you curious enough to follow the star? Now God said to me, I want you to share my word with my people. I had no idea what that meant. I want you to share my word with my people. 
What in the world did that mean? I had to be curious enough to follow that message to find out what it meant. And for me, in this particular case, it wasn't a destiny. It was a journey. My people came to be, for me, the United Methodist Church. I started as a lay speaker. God first illumined that path for me. And that led to seminary. And that led to being commissioned. And that led to being ordained. And at this point in my journey, it has led me here to be in ministry with you, Wesleyan Chapel. I give thanks for that. Following that star has shined a light on every step of the journey thus far. That was a big epiphany. But all of our epiphanies aren't always a dramatic life change or a complete new direction. Sometimes God tells us to shift our rudder a couple of degrees. Or perhaps to do a turn in another direction. Or maybe sometimes God calls us to do a short-term, small project. Sometimes God is shining a light on the Bible for us to say, know me more, read my word more. I've got something to say to you. If you've never done the Bible in one year, it is a very cool experience. It is a sort of a whirlwind journey that illumines things you've never imagined before. It gives you insight to what your life is today. What God would have you to be as his follower. Where God would have you to go. I don't know what God might be calling you to in 2021. Maybe God is calling you to be more steeped in his word. Maybe God is calling you to join a new ministry or to lead a ministry. Maybe God is calling you to be more generous in your giving and not to live into the world's fear of scarcity. Maybe God is calling you to join the choir or the praise band when COVID is passed. Maybe God just wants you to be in a Bible study, to have fellowship with other Christians. I don't know, but I do believe that God is continuously calling us, continuously calling us to be in relationship with him and often calling us to do something specific or perhaps to change something about ourselves. Sometimes God shines a really bright light on words of Scripture for me that, that might as well say, Suzanne... Be still. Calm down and get quiet for a few minutes. And when God shines the light for us, how do we respond? We learn from the Magi how they responded. When they found the Christ child, they paid him homage. That means to honor and to worship. They worshiped the Christ child. And they gave him gifts. Meaningful and valuable gifts. Not just any gifts, but the best gifts they had to offer. The wise men, in response to finding the baby worshipped him and gave him gifts. Following the star, worshipping and giving gifts, drew those magi into a relationship with God through Jesus. And they were then poised to be on alert for another epiphany which the Lord gave to them, in which they were told not to go back to Herod, that that was a dangerous route, but to go home by another way. Deeper relationship with God, a new epiphany. When we practice being steeped in our faith through prayer and presence with God and 
reading the scriptures and nurturing Christian friendships, we too are more positioned to hear from God. We are more positioned to see where God's light is shining for us. And God has given us all gifts. All of us have gifts that we are called to use for the building up of the glory of God and for the building of God's church. And my wish and my prayer, and I hope yours too, for 2021, is that we would all live into our discipleship in ways that glorify God personally and in ways that build God's kingdom in and through this church that we would grow in our faith and that we would grow as church. And as church, that we would ask ourselves over and over again in this coming year, how are you calling us, God, to water and feed your vine? Our branches of vibrant worship, intentional outreach, nurturing hospitality, and empowering disciples. How might they grow? How might we feed and water the vine? So I'm going to leave you with a question. What star is manifesting for you these days? What is the epiphany that God has for you that requires you to be curious enough to follow the light, to see what God has for you? Are we curious enough to follow the star? Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for the star of Bethlehem. We give you thanks for the conjunction of these planets last week that gave us cause to think about your Christmas star. We thank you for the Magi who traveled following your star so that all the world may see your divinity in the person of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for your light to be bright this year. We pray for you to illumine your word for us. Help us to listen to one another as Christian friends. Help us to, to be there as brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, we pray that you would bring us together again safely to worship in big numbers to laugh together and sing together and praise your name as loudly as we want to in your house. Lord, we thank you for Jesus who was born for us, who lived for us and taught us, who died our death and rose again that we might live. May today not just be the only day of epiphany for us, your people. May we see your light throughout the year. In the holy name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Said the night winds to the little lamb, do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb, do you see what I see? A star, a star. Dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite, with a tail as big as a kite. Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? sky shepherd boy do you hear what 
I hear a song, a song high above the tree with a voice as big as the sea, with a voice as big as the sea. Said the shepherd boy to the mighty king, Do you know what I know? In your palace walls, high and mighty king, Do you know what I know? A child, a child, shivers in the cold let us bring him silver and gold oh let us bring him silver and gold said the king to the people everywhere listen to what I say Pray for peace, people everywhere. Listen to what I say. The child, the child, sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. Oh, he will bring us goodness and light. today is one that we've sung a lot. It's Beautiful Things by Gunger. And uh, as we sing this song this morning, I hope that you invite God's love and his warmth and his joy into your heart. And we don't know what's coming in this year, but we can take heart in the truth that God makes beautiful things out of the dust. And we can pray that he might make us as beautiful as possible uh, this year. Make beautiful things. You make beautiful. 
beautiful things out of the dust you make beautiful things you make beautiful things out of May the peace of Christ dwell in your hearts and may the light of Christ guide your feet in this new year. Go in peace and love and hope and joy. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Amen.